Do you wanna reach your goals in 2023? I'm here to show you five simple steps on how you can make that happen. Are you looking for ways to set and achieve your goals in 2023? In this video, I'm gonna show you how to get clear on what you want, create a plan of attack and stick with it, break down big goals into small tasks, track progress regularly, and celebrate your successes along the way. Let's get started. So this video, I think, it will probably start in my office, but I tried to make this whole video in my office. It was just nerve wracking. It was just the, the sterility of it, the whole just feeling of it sitting down. I, it, I'm just not that type of creator, unfortunately. Or fortunately, I, I don't know how you, however you want to look at it. But um, I'm more of that type of creator who wants to go out and talk about things kind of off the cuff. Um, just some ideas and, and spitballing things that I'm going through that I'm working on right now and hopefully it'll add some value to you guys as well with it especially being 2023 day two of that so um, but like this uh, title of the video is talking about here are just five tips on on how to achieve your goals for 2023 and hopefully you have some goals I don't think there's anything wrong with having some goals, big goals, uh, goals to help improve your life, goals to help improve your relationships, your job, your finances, it, you know, anything that, should, that is out there because it actually gives you something to, to work towards. It, it gives you something to work for and, and, and start doing things because versus not having anything to work towards, then you just get in this mindless routine where you don't know why you're doing why you're doing things and that could easily and quickly lead to depression and I just don't want that for you guys so um, I'm having my own battles with depression and going through that as well myself and I just don't want that for anybody else out there now one of the first things I want to talk about is just getting clear on what you actually want what is it in your life that you want to improve what is it that that you just have to you're just sick and tired of having the same old same old type of thing and it's really just getting a clear picture of it at first, and that could start, maybe you don't have a clear picture of it, maybe, maybe you have what you don't want, right? And I think there's, I think there's very, a lot of value in sitting down just for a couple of minutes and writing down some things that you just don't want, and, and maybe to list them out in different categories. One of the practices that I do myself is I write down a couple of categories of my life that I just want to improve, and, and then I spend some time on each of those categories, like what do I want in this category or what do I not want? And then out of that not want or want, I start to create this picture in myself so that I know what I'm gonna be working towards and what am I looking, looking forward to. Hopefully this video doesn't last too long because I don't know how much longer my arm's gonna, gonna, gonna hold out for. But um, it's really just to get clear on what you want and then write that out and then and create some mental imagery based off of that. And one of the cool things that I've, one of the practices that I've actually ran across in reading and I've done it a couple of times is called the mirror effect. Uh, I think it's in a book. I will put that book up here on the screen somewhere um, so that you know what it is. The Magic of Believing, that's what it is. The Magic of Believing, The Mirror Effect, page 92 I think it is or something like that. But um, it's the mirror effect. It's getting in front of a mirror and then telling yourself what you want, you what the picture of your life to be. And then, it, and, and there's like this weird, I, I don't wanna get too voodoo or crazy on it, but it, and I don't think it's anything like that either, but I think there's just this weird effect where you're telling yourself in the mirror, looking yourself dead in the eye, and saying, this is the life that I want, this is the life that we have currently. And speaking things in the current, uh, in the current tense, not in the future tense. So I think that's one thing that you can start to change with your vernacular when you start talking about these goals and getting clear on what you want. You know, I would go over to the table and set this down, but it was just a little too windy for my liking. I don't know what the audio sounded, and I really didn't want to clean up the audio that much. But, um, you know, the second thing, um, moving on to the second tip, is uh, breaking your, your those goals and that mental imagery or that imagery that you've written down in those different categories of your life that you want to improve and the, and the goals that you have, breaking those big goals into actionable steps. So part of breaking down the big goals into actionable steps is that they have to be action. So for example, if your goal was to improve your relationships, maybe you have a spouse or a significant other, or maybe it's just improving your relationships overall with, with everybody. Maybe it's like uh, have a valuable conversation or have a crucial conversation and send a, have a crucial conversation or text with somebody every single day. 
send out a text or give somebody a call every single day and have a conversation with that person. And that will greatly increase your relationship skills. It'll greatly increase your conversational skills and, and investing in other people because that's where it really meets, that's where the rubber meets the road in your relationships is when you're actually investing in other people to the level that they are, they are appreciative of your interaction with them. And it's not just you talking about you to them, it's you talking about them to them. And just getting insight about their life and hearing their story and things like that. It could be talking to strangers, it could be talking to your significant other and asking them questions that you've never asked them before. Um, so it, it's just, ha you have to break it down to an actionable step. You know, if it's finances, what can you do today that'll get you to the goal that you, your overarching goal for the year that you want to get to. So that's what it means by breaking down big goals into actionable steps. So admittedly, the uh, camera and tripod got a little heavy for me, so we're just gonna be facing the sun right now. Look at all that. Uh, uh, yeah, that's good. Um, and uh, the third tip is, I forgot. All right, yes, tip number three. Uh, make a plan and stick to it, or make a plan of attack and stick to it. Now, my thoughts on making a plan of attack and sticking to it, I, I think your plan of attack really, um, really comes down to what you're doing every single day. So we broke down our big goals into actionable steps. Now we've got a list, we should have a list of actionable steps for different goals and categories of your life that you want to improve. Now that with all those list of actions, what do, what do we do with that? And I think a plan of attack is having a daily game plan. And, and I hear daily game plan so many times, but I think what it really means is scheduling out those tasks in your calendar to the point that you know what you're doing on any given day and what time you're doing those actions that'll, that'll feed into that big goal that you have for the year or for yourself or for the categories of your lives that you want to improve. And it, maybe it isn't a goal that it's like to achieve, maybe it's just a standard of excellence that you just want to rise to over the year and improve in your life. And so the plan of attack is really, where can you fit this into your current schedule because you're currently not doing it right now, right? You're, you're doing things that aren't, well, let's just say, I'll say it this way. You were, you were doing things that were not feeding into this standard of excellence and this goal previously now you're deciding to set a time aside to actually achieve these actions that'll feed into this overarching goal that you have. Excuse me. Now, what you have to do, the plan of attack is look in your schedule and what responsibilities do I have? Put those down. If it's family, if it's work, if it's a nine to five, if it's whatever the case might be, if it's travel, put all of that in there. And then secondly, after all of your responsibilities that you can't control, that you don't have any control over, you know, you don't have control over your family or your kids and, and the times that they have to be at school, or you have to drop them off, or you have to spend time with your wife, you know, you, there's some of those things are out of your control, especially your nine to five job or whatever schedule that you have with your job, Zoom meetings, calls, things like that. Things that are out of your control, put those responsibilities down in your calendar. And then secondly, after that, put in your habits or put in the actions that you're trying to achieve towards the goal that you're trying to accomplish for the year. And and for me, that's like, you know, I, I love the idea of putting things into my calendar because now I know it's gonna it's gonna alert me on my, if I'm wearing a, a smartwatch, it's gonna alert me on my wrist, it's gonna alert me on my phone, it's gonna alert me on my computer. It's gonna get to me some way, shape, or form, and then I'm gonna have a responsibility with that notification whether to do the thing that I told myself I was going to do or to not do it. And unfortunately, there's been many times and many seasons of my life where I've chosen not to do it, and I've been pretty in uh, inconsistent with that, right? I chose to do it and I chose not to do it, but at least I have a reminder at setting it as a calendar, like, okay, this is the time that I'm gonna be sending a text to somebody to help improve my relationships. This is the time where today is the day that I have to pay my bills and and all the allotted money that is for bills, that's not gonna go to anything else. I can't have it go anywhere else because I have a financial goal this year. Um, this is the time where I've set aside to make uh, cold calls for my business or to, to send out uh, cold prospecting emails, whatever the case might be. That is the time that you allotted for yourself that you told your future self and that future self has now come to the point of now 
that you told yourself that you were gonna do this and now it's in your calendar and you have to make the decision to, to actually do it. And that's where it really comes into play. And I think that's the plan of attack. Like once you have it in your calendar and you set a reminder and a notification in your calendar so that it goes off on your wrist if you have a smartwatch, it goes off on your phone, it goes off on your computer, uh, if you're at your computer, wherever it'll get to you. And now you've got to make the decision, I am going to invest in myself and my future self because I told myself I was gonna do this when I put it in my calendar. <laughs> and so that's why I think that year-long goals is really hard to focus on but week and daily are so much easier to focus on and your plan of attack should really be in your daily calendar because um, I think that's where it really gets uh, really gets serious and really gets the responsibility is much higher um, when you actually see that notification it's like okay this is the time that I said I was going to do this for this goal now I'm gonna do it and when that time comes here comes the identity based goal is I am the type of person who follows through on this decision, right? When that notification comes up, you have to tell yourself that I am the type of person who invests in other re people's relationships because I am sending this text message to somebody or I am giving somebody a call or I am investing in my uh, significant other by asking, by investing in this conversation right now, whatever the case might be. When that calendar notification comes up, that's when you say to yourself, I am the type of person that does X, Y, and Z for this goal. And I think I think for me, it's definitely had my seasons where I've definitely told myself that and that's actually produced a lot of fruit in my life, so. Now, step number four is talking about routinely measure progress and adjust as needed. Uh, routinely checking progress. Now, it's hard for me to really check progress on certain goals of mine to see if I'm making progress. Um, I think that for certain goals, it's extremely easy, like financial goals, it's math, it's numbers. Is the savings account going up or is it going down? Is the debt going up or is it going down? Like those types of goals are obviously easy. And, and for those, it's really easy to, to check the progress. Where am I at? What have I done wrong? What have I done right? and let's keep doing the right things and let's not do the wrong things. Um, for like relationships, it's a little bit harder, but if it's if it's you investing in your significant other and having mosquitoes, not having mosquitoes, if it's, if it's having like more valuable conversations and investing in your significant other, then you can actually have those conversations of, hey, significant other, how do you feel our relationship is going right now? And do you feel do you feel more secure? Do you feel, do you feel more intimate? Like whatever the case might be, those are the conversations that you need to have to help check progress and check routinely check progress, whether that's on a weekly date night or a weekly, uh, on a weekly routine where you're asking that type of question. But I think on a weekly basis or in a month, especially a monthly basis, it's extremely um, imperative that you check uh, your progress and see how you're doing. And then so that on a week to week basis, you know what you're doing wrong and what you're doing right and you can change quickly. But if it's on a month, like like debt or savings or anything like that, that's more of on a monthly basis so that you can make changes to hopefully get to where you want to go by the end of the year. So I think it's extremely imperative because there's gonna be days and weeks and months where things may not go right and, and emergencies might come up or whatever the case might be, but those will come up and you will have to make changes around that stuff um, and also the the things that you thought were gonna work probably didn't work and so once you're actually in the day-to-day -day grind of making these types of decisions whether to do it or not to do it you have to know how far you've come um, how far how far how much further you have to go and then also what do I need to change to get there either faster or how do, how do I change my pace you actually have to have the data to make those types of decisions when the time comes and lastly, step number five is surround yourself with people who believe in you and celebrate wins along the way. Now, this is a really big one, um, and it's one that I have not done very well. Um, I have been independent for a very long time, and it's it's been to a fault, unfortunately, and it's been um, to, to my detriment in uh, for far too long. Uh, but this year, it, that is one of my goals, is to really reach out to other people, um, mentors and people that I look up to, people that I respect, people who have done the things that I don't wanna do, and really just invest in the relationship um, because there are a lot of people that I have 
met along the way that can be a support system for me in different areas of my life and areas that I'm trying to improve in. And there's people that also believe in me um, to do certain things, believe in me more than I believe in myself in certain areas. And, and I just haven't invested in that and I haven't taken that seriously. And so this is one of the things that I have to take to heart and I am gonna be working on this year, but it's really surrounding myself with like-minded individuals and, and not just surrounding myself, but investing in that, in that association, right? Like you can put yourself in, in an environment of like-minded individuals, but if you, don't, if you don't actually invest and step out and engage in really good conversations between each other that are mutually beneficial, I just don't think you're gonna get as much uh, of it out. You're not gonna get as much of it out, I, I'll tell you that. Because I, I have put myself in environments that uh, were like-minded, but I didn't get it. I didn't get as much out of it as I as somebody else did because I didn't engage in the conversations that they were engaging in. I didn't engage or invest in the relationships like the other person was investing and engaging in the relationships with. And so it just wasn't the same. And that's why you can have two people be in the same environment and one gets one result in their life and the other person gets the other result in their life because how much are they investing? How much are they um, engaging in the environment themselves? And what type of relationships are they cultivating in that environment? And so I've just been the type of person that has been unfortunately extremely independent and, and it's been to a fault. And it's, it's very unfortunate because I'm you know, in my mid thirties right now. And it, it's the lone wolf is not a, a great thing. You know, being, being a Ronin, being a lone wolf, being the independent mysterious guy that there's nothing cool about that. Um, and I think people need other people. It, 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 it's inherent. We need other people, right? And so this is one thing that I have to take for myself and then I have to uh, make better for my year, but also, um, surround yourself with the people that actually do believe in you, right? Like it, it's easy to say that you don't want to be around the people that don't believe in you, obviously, because that's going to be in a negative environment. But really pick and invest in the relationships where people support you emotionally, mentally, physically, uh, spiritually, um, people that are like minded, people who have the same goals. Um, if you have a significant other, like for me, I have a wife and a family. My wife is my number one support system. Um, she's the one that's got similar like-minded goals. We're obviously like-minded. We obviously talk all the time and every day. Holy mosquitoes. Ah. Um, she's the one that I turn to, but then also there's, there's relationships. There's guy-to-guy -guy relationships that I need in my life that they believe in me and I need to invest in those relationships and I need to take that seriously. And so I think for me, I'm gonna take it seriously this year. I think for you, if you're looking to accomplish some goals, I think you need to find that support system for yourself. Pick those people um, with discretion and um, with intentionality. And then also invest in that relationship too. Don't just pick them and say, hey, you're, you're my support system for the year. Say like, hey, I really want to invest in this relationship. How do you feel about teaming up on this goal or whatever the case might be? Do you have very similar goals? What are your goals for this year, right? Because if they don't have goals, then that's probably not the person that you want to be hanging around with. If they do have goals, then that's the person that that's the type of person that you want to surround yourself with. And then from there, you want to be able to invest in that relationship and talk and and really, you know, like the Bible says, iron sharpens iron. You want to you want to take what you're learning, take what they're learning, and then and then get inspired by what they're achieving so that they can get inspired by what you're achieving too. So um, it's extremely imperative to have that support system and like-minded association um, in your life for achieving goals in 2023.